Good morning, good morning, or I should say good day. I am so excited because I want to welcome you to day one of the 50 days of freedom. Now, I want to begin this journey uh, coming from Isaiah chapter one, verse one. It is Isaiah's the book that we will be studying through this these 50 days. And for this first week, I want us to look at the context of the environment that Isaiah lived. Um, in Isaiah chapter one, verse one, this is what the Bible says. It says, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So these were the kings that lived during the time of king of, of the prophet Isaiah. And uh, we will start with the this week looking at these kings, get the framework for what we are going to be attempting to do in the, the in the 50 days. Now the first king is King Uzziah, and I want you to um, get your Bibles and turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 26. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And all of the people of Judah, I'm starting with verse 1, took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. He built Elah, restored it to Judah after the king slept with his father. 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign, and he reigned 50 and two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jokaliah and of Jerusalem. And he did that which, which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Amaziah did. And he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him to. Oscar. Now, verse 16, it says, well, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction, for he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Father, we need you to speak to us this morning. Hallelujah for what you have planned for us. Amen. Now, I want to give a title to our devotion this morning. What makes men, good men fail? What makes good men fall? Excuse me. What makes good men fall? Of all the biblical characters that I can say that, I, that disappoint me, heroes that fall far short of their potential, no one rises higher than King Uzziah. In fact, most Christians are unaware of his giant accomplishments as king, administrator, leader, builder, and commander in chief. Here are some facts that should give context to the real life stature of this man, King Uzziah. When Isaiah saw the Lord in chapter six, I and lifted up. Certainly one of the most powerful descriptive encounters with God in all of scripture contextualizes the encounter with these words, in the year King Uzziah died. King Uzziah's death was of such national importance, of such significance, it is added as a description of the time Isaiah saw God. On the long reign of Isaiah, around 783 to 742 BC, Judah reached the summit of its power, um, of its fame, second only to Solomon's time. Isaiah built the economy and the military and conquered the Philistines, Arabians, and received tribute from the Ammonites. Isaiah provided the entire army with shields, spears, helmets, coats of mail, bows, and sling stones. 
And he built structures on the walls of Jerusalem designed for experts uh, to protect those who shot arrows and hurled large stones from the towers and large corners of the wall. That's Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 14 and 15. I want to make a point here. No other king of Judah accomplished more ever than King Uzziah. But we read, but when he became powerful, he became proud in verse 16. Uzziah became a victim of his own success. He attempted to usurp the authority of the priesthood, entering into the holy place to burn incense on the altar. Azariah, the high priest, went in after him with 80 other priests of the Lord, brave men. They confront Uzziah and tell him, it is not for you, it is not for you to burn incense to the Lord. That is the work of the priests alone, the descendants of Aaron, who are set apart for this work. Verses 17 and 18. Uzziah became furious upon hearing this. With the burning censer in his hand and fury burning in his heart, leprosy appeared on his forehead. Azariah, the high priest, and the 80 rushed the king out of the temple. In fact, Uzziah was eager to leave because the Lord had smitten him. It was uh, 750 when BC when Uzziah was stricken with leprosy. And Jotham, his son, was the public face of the monarchy, though actual power seemed to have resided with Uzziah. I asked, why, King Uzziah, why were you angry? Why did you just put down the censer? Why did you just apologize with sackcloth and ashes? You could have been Judah's greatest king. But alas, you are relegated to just a few verses in the, in the book of Kings and a chapter in Second Chronicles. How did things go so terribly wrong? In verse 16, when he became strong or powerful, he also became proud. Proud to his own destruction. Pride. It goes before destruction. What makes good men fall? C.S. Lewis points out in a chapter on pride in his classic Mere Christianity, that pride is competitive and comparative. Pride needs someone to measure itself to and against. Having a nice home is not wrong, but becomes an object of pride when compared to the smaller houses in the neighborhood. A good Pharisee leaves the temple not justified because the impetus for all his great works was not to be like other men. Lucifer made himself a Satan through the conceit that he can rival God and Eve could be like God. Pride compares, I am better, I have better. It needs someone to look down upon. Isaiah, it says, lifted up his heart and did what no other king before or after him did, to burn incense to the Lord. The priests who were allotted to do it were not one of Judah's greatest king. How dare anyone tell me I, King Uzziah, cannot burn incense in the temple. Just like that, all of his accomplishments became worthless. God made him to prosper was the first description of Isaiah as he sought the Lord. Our advantages should not be measured next to our neighbors like uh, the seven foot center Shaquille O'Neal far off standing next to the diminutive Kevin Hart. His leprosy didn't come when the censor was, his, was in his hand. I hope you notice that. His leprosy 
did not come when the censer was in his hand. But when the fury was displaced, was displayed, when his fury was displayed, after the people he looked down upon told him that he was wrong. Let us pray. Father, deliver us from pride. Father, if we are going to go through this journey, we have to give up comparing ourselves with other people. Lord, deliver us from our conceit, from arrogance, that we may be humble before you. In your son's name I pray, amen. Well, I pray that you will read Second Chronicles chapter 26 today. I pray that you will pray with your prayer partner on this powerful text. As we begin this journey of freedoms, we have to give up some things. And I want you to pray to God that God may help us, help you, help me to give up our pride and our need to compete and to compare with others. God bless you today.